that was a fish. Oh, there we go, guys. Oh, there's a fish. Oh my god. There's a fish right there, guys. I saw him come up and eat that. That was so sick. That was so sick. Next cast. I saw him come up and eat that. That was so sick. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a really good fish. Holy lord. Oh, there we go, guys. Oh, fatty, too. There we go, guys. Oh, oh, Daisy May. <laughs> Fat T right there. Mm, 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 mm. That's how you get it done right there, girl. Yes. Good, good. You got it. Daisy May. Say hi to the folks out there. A little tutorial video today, May. Say hi to the folks. Yeah? Have a fun time in the water? All right. Woo, it is hot out here, guys. It is hot, and I think everyone and their mother is out at the lake right now. It is packed with people. Daisy and I are taking a break here on the bank uh, just to cool off a little bit. As you guys can tell by the title, today's gonna be a slightly different video than usual. And by the title, you guys can probably infer what I'm gonna talk about today. I'm gonna show you the three rigs that I think you need to know if you're gonna fish here in the state. And I hear these questions all the time. Instagram, I hear them, YouTube, I hear them. You guys just want to know how to tie these rigs and how they're used uh, here in the state. So I'm gonna cover that today. As you can probably tell, I'm at the beautiful Bartlett Lake right now and the bass here love those three rigs. So I guess the first thing I'm gonna do, uh, I have nothing tied on here, so I'm gonna tie it up on there for you guys, show you what the rig is, and then uh, at the end of all this, uh, we'll cut to some footage of me slaying, hopefully slaying some bass on these rigs for you guys. Uh, it's about three o'clock right now, so the evening bite is coming, and uh, hopefully people will start leaving the lake. It is packed with people. So with that being said, guys, Daisy and I, we're gonna hop in the boat real quick. I'm gonna throw the camera in the back and we're gonna tie up these rigs. All right, guys, so the camera's about to die on me. So I'm just gonna show you real quick the first rig that you're gonna wanna know, and that is the wacky rig. Uh, so it involves a Senko, a stick bait like this guy here, O-rings and a wacky tool. Um, you don't have to have the wacky tool, but it makes it very easy to slide. You see those O-rings down the tube onto the worm. So I highly recommend getting that O-ring tool. And then, of course, you're gonna need a hook. Uh, there's lots of hooks that you can go with. I like the uh, the circle style hooks or the octopus hooks. There's specific wacky rig hooks out there. And this is just what I found as an overall finesse hook. Just a really good hook to go with. That's a Gamagatsu size two octopus circle right there. So good one to go with. So we're gonna start with this rig. First, you're gonna grab this guy here, pull the packaging off, and that gives us our pen tool there. All right, so you can see it's hollow in there and it's the right um, diameter for a Senko to fit into. And then it's got these O-rings here at the bottom, which you're gonna slide all the way up the tube and over the worm. Alrighty, let's take our worm. It doesn't matter what end you stick in there because uh, the O-ring is gonna end up in the middle of the worm and I'll explain why in a second. Slide the worm in there and take your O-ring and you start pushing it up the tube. So now you can see on the tube there that O-ring's right at the end. I'm gonna find the egg sac of the worm, which is basically the smooth part or the middle of the Senko. And boom, that ring just popped right onto that worm. And I want it down a little bit more, so I'm gonna slide it down a little bit. So now you can see that that ring is basically in the middle of the worm there. You can see it's right there. All right, perfect. The reason why the pen tool is so nice is because that ring squeezes quite a bit. And if you were to stretch that and try to put the worm through, it's gonna be real difficult. So when you can slide the worm in there and just slip that uh, o-ring down on top of the worm makes it really nice and convenient definitely worth the investment there okay so from there you got your worm with the ring on the center of the worm there now what you're going to do you're going to take your hook of choice like you said this is an octopus circle size two gamagatsu there and you're going to take your worm and you're going to run that hook in between i don't know if you guys can see that very good in between the worm and that o-ring all right just like that so now if you look at it you got your hook in between that o-ring on top of that worm and that o-ring is just encapsulating everything right there now it's hooked in the middle that there is called a wacky rig anytime you got a bait that's hooked right through the center like that with your with your hook anytime you got a worm or another style bait that's hooked right through the center like that that is called a wacky rig and now from there all you do is tie your favorite knot to the eye of the hook there and you're good to fish it pretty simple how you get you're going to fish this guy you're just going to cast it out there with these senkos are pretty heavy so they're going to sink and basically you're just going to fish it similar to a drop shot you're going to throw it out there real small twitches work it up off the bottom work it on the top let the fish tell you where they they want that worm and it's pretty simple that's that's basically it as far as the the wacky rig goes just fish it real slow 
It's a finesse style presentation. It's great for pitching around trees, uh, rocks, overhanging trees, structure, like really anything. Um, does great for docks as well. It's a very good skipping uh, set up as well. So you can get it quite a ways. So yeah, that's the wacky rig right there guys pretty simple and easy and all set to go there So the next setup is going to be the drop shot of course I think that is a staple for the West Coast uh, any clear lake uh, You're gonna want this finesse set up when the bite is tough uh, This rig really really brings up those bites. So it's a great setup I absolutely believe that this rig you have got to know especially for these clear reservoirs. So I'll show you guys how to rig it up. It's pretty simple here. So a lot of you guys might be familiar with the polymer knot and that's the exact knot that I'm gonna tie here to set up the drop shot. It's just a one knot deal. But really all I do is uh, the basic polymer knot to get my drop shot started. I got my line right here running up to the tip of my, my rod there. And I'm gonna run my hook facing towards the tip of the rod. As you can see, just like that. Run that line through, pull quite a bit out because you're gonna wanna use that. You're gonna wanna use that line as your leader. You're gonna wanna use that longer end as the middle between your hook and your weight there. Make that fairly long there. Usually I like about eight to eight inches to a foot. And then I'm gonna run the line right back through. I'm just tying a polymer knot, guys. Super simple. You got your line back through. Normal overhand knot, simple polymer. If you guys wanna know how to tie that knot, um, I actually have a video on it. You guys can check that out. Now what happens with that polymer knot, when you pull your tag end, you're gonna get a really long tag end section there, okay? So some of you guys, you'll notice when you tie it on there that your hook, instead of facing up, like a drop shot should, it's gonna face down. No big deal, all you have to do, tag end right here and run it through the bottom of the eye and back over. And when you pull it tight, it'll flip your hook back over, okay? Super simple, don't panic, it's not a big deal. You didn't tie the knot wrong, it's just how the hook ended up, okay? Now all you're gonna do from here, you got your hook up top and now you're gonna add your weight to the bottom. That's gonna form what basically is a drop shot where you got your hook up top and your weight on the bottom. I grabbed, I believe this is a quarter ounce weight out of here. And as you notice, it's got this little tiny line clip on there. And that's how you can snap your line into that little line clip there, or you can tie it on there. I prefer tying it on. Most of the time I'm, ru I'm running tungsten weights. And the cool thing about this line tie is if you just snap your line in there, if you get stuck, you're gonna get stuck a lot with these drop shots or any of these finesse baits. Um, it allows you to pop that weight off and you can still keep your hook in your worm. For me, I like tying it on, so I'm gonna tie it on. I'm basically just gonna do an overhand knot, nothing fancy. Cause like I said, if my hook gets wet, I still want it to be free enough to where it'll pop off. And then I'm gonna tie another overhand knot on the weight there. All right, second overhand knot, boom, snapped up in the top of the guide. Okay, so now you got your weight on the bottom. Now this is what it's gonna look like. You got your hook up top, okay, if you guys can see that. You got your hook up top and your weight on the bottom. That's a drop shot. So essentially like the wacky rig, you're gonna throw it out there and just drag it on the bottom. Just real slow, drag it, give it a little hops and that worm is gonna sit there and dance. So here's how you rig the worm. And you don't have to use this style finesse hook. I like a wide gap hook, but you don't have to use a wide gap. Uh, you can also use a small EWG. A lot of guys like throwing it weedless, and you can definitely do that. Uh, smaller hook, the better, because you'd be throwing a smaller bait on there. Basically all you do, I like this guy. It's a little zoom, four inch green weenie, and uh, or meathead in green weenie color. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hook, go about, I don't know, quarter an inch up the head, and hook it straight through, just like that right there, okay? Boom, you're good to go. That's your drop shot setup right there. It's as easy as that. So now you got your worm up top, your weight on the bottom. And when that sits in the water, that's just gonna dance just like that there. And that worm's gonna give off some crazy action. It's a nice elevated presentation for the bass. And it is just a deadly, deadly presentation. That'll catch you fish right there. That's easy as that. That's your drop shot there. Just basic polymer. Tie your polymer around your hook and use that tag in and tie your weight on. You're all set. So the next rig is going to be a Texas rig. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. If you're any kind of serious angler, this rig has got to be in your arsenal, in your inventory, and it's very easy to do. And there's a couple of different ways you can do it and you can pretty much throw it anywhere and throw anything on it really. So I'm going to show you guys how to rig it up real quick. I like using bobber stops, so you don't have to use them. Basically what a bobber stop is, is it's something that you put on your line and it pinches down your line so when your weight goes up, it can't get past that little stopper there. I like it. I just think it keeps my, my profile more compact. Usually I'll only put one for a Texas rig and for heavier duty stuff, I'll run two. But all you do, put it through that little loop on your deal there and you slide that bobber stop onto your line. Now you got that bobber stop right there on your line and that's gonna keep your weight from going back and forth. So now I'm gonna pick my weight here. I'm probably gonna go, we're gonna go with this guy here. I believe that's a 3 8 I like tungsten because it's a little denser. You get a smaller package for the weight and uh, because it's denser metal, it's more sensitive. First step, slide your bobber stop on there. Second step, take your bullet weight here or worm weight as they can be called and slide that with the narrow end first. 
slide that onto the line, boom. Now you got that. So now your weight can go back and forth, okay? When you see it hits that bobber stop, boom, and it stops. So that's what you want there. Now onto your hook. I got a small chicken craw that I'm gonna be throwing today. So small hook to match it. And this is an EWG hook. This is probably the most important part of any Texas rig right here is the hook. An EWG stands for extra wide gap. So you're getting an offset from your point to your bend there. And that's what traps the bait onto the hook. And because it's a super wide bend, you're getting that extra wide gap in between there. Super clutch, debatably the best hook to throw for a Texas rig. There's also an, a traditional worm hook that you can do this with as well. But traditionally you're gonna be throwing that EWG. So again, tie your favorite knot. I'm gonna do a little polymer action here. That all tied up there. We are gonna trim that down. You want to get that as compact as possible. So I'm gonna take that bobber stop and forcefully slide it down the hook there, down the line there. And now it's keeping everything onto that hook. I leave a little bit of room so that weight can clack around or you can keep it tight if you're pushing it through cover. Uh, and there you go, that is a Texas rig there. And then you get your bait of choice. Like I said, you can pretty much throw it on anything. I'm throwing a little Tex or a little chicken craw here. And then the first thing you're gonna do with this style hook is you're gonna run it to that bend right there. You're gonna run the bait to the bend. Boom, ran it to that bend. Now you're gonna poke it out directly where it came from. Okay. Slide it all the way up past that little angle right there. That's gonna trap your bait to this hook. See, now it's all the way flush with the weight there. And that bait, show you, it's not sliding down that hook now. That hook is, or that bend is holding it there. Now you take that bend, line it up to where it needs to go back through the chicken craw there. Poke it through. And I like to just expose it, which means you run it through, run it through there, and then you're gonna run it back into the bait. And it's gonna be now you have a completely weedless rig there super super hydrodynamic good profile good small profile there you run my finger over the back of the bait and i'm not getting hung up because that point is buried into the bait i'm gonna go to set the hook it's got enough pressure to poke through the back you can probably see it wanting to poke through there and that'll get your fish pinned so super simple rig to do bobber stop choice of weight and then an EWG or worm hook, and then your bait of choice. And it keeps it nice and weedless and a good profile there. You can use it for heavy cover, light stuff, worming, anything really, and you can pretty much throw it anywhere. It's probably the most versatile setup that an angler can know. So right on guys. All right, Daisy, that's it. That's how you tie the wacky rig, the drop shot, and the Texas rig. You ready to fish them, catch some fish? She's whining at me because she wants back in the boat because she's ready to go catch some fish, so. That's what we're gonna do. This is my favorite part here. Let's go see if we can catch a couple of fish with these three methods, guys, and uh, show you that they really do work. Oh, I'm beached. Daisy, man, you on the front does not help. We are in for business now, Daisy. All right, guys, let's catch some fish. Big hype for this. I'm gonna start with the good old drop shot. Catch a fish, move on to the next. It's windy, and there's people all over the place. Craziness right now. We got wake all over the place. And I'm on a rock. Well, let's go get it. Usually they're just on the backside of them rocks, though. And they'll pop off just like that. Oh, actually, that's someone's line. I don't want these lines on my hooks. Nasty. One thing with these finesse style baits is they're pretty hard to feel. In the wind, you really gotta have a nice rod, good line, braid the leader is what I prefer, and just kinda know what a bite feels like. And you can pick it out even with a bowed line. Just gotta watch your line, see if it's jumping, if it's moving to the side, it'll tell you. There's ways to feel it even in the wind. You just gotta be patient. Basically sitting on a main lake point right now, and it goes from super windy in front of me to not so windy right here to my left. Pretty sure these fish are gonna be sitting right on the point on the edge of where it's windy and calm. I'm gonna wait for bait fish to be cruising down uh, rougher water, trying to get in this calmer stuff and ambush them. I fish a drop shot fairly fast. I mean, I don't, I'm not afraid to give it some, give it some oomph, you know? I think too many guys fish it too slow. There's a fish right there, guys. That's exactly what I was just saying. Uh, he's a little guy. But a fish on the drop shot. Staying down, actually. Man, this guy's got some shoulders on him. Woo! Giant. There we go. That's what I was saying there. I fish it fairly fast, and he bumped it on like the third, uh, the third little twitch there. Well, that was fun. There we go, guys. <laughs> Not a giant. I've caught two of these little dudes today. I've only been fishing for maybe 15 minutes altogether, but uh, show you in the pudding. They do like the drop shot, even if they're this big. That's the one thing the drop shot. You never know. You can catch a fish this big, or you can catch a fish that'll eat this fish. Thanks, buddy. He's me. 
We got one. I want a drop shot. Might throw it around a little longer, see if I can get a better fish than that, just because I don't even know if I want to count that as a fish. And then I'll pick up that Texas rig and uh, see if I can catch anything bigger at that. I'm gonna throw that over there just because he ran pretty fast as soon as I hooked him. You know, maybe it's because he was like three inches long, but see if there's more fish that are maybe hanging out with them over there. Right off a little point that comes out. Those two trees right there, it's pretty shallow. And then I caught him pretty much right in front of that tree. Daggone stuck again. Yeah, we'll pick up that Texas rig. That just sounds more tempting right now. That just sounds like a little more fun than throwing a drop shot, but it works. You know, the drop shot just, just works. It's one of those things that just work. Wrap her up. We're busting out of this popsicle joint. Let's get out of here. Oh, Jesus, Daisy. There we go, guys. So that was a fish. There we go, Daisy. Oh. Oh, it's a bluegill. Holy moly. Look at this thing. Hey, buddy. A little green sunny. Crank the Texas rig. Not catching big fish today, but uh, interesting fish. Look at that green sunfish. Look at those markings, those teal markings. It's beautiful. That is a beautiful fish. Thanks for uh, smoking that. That was cool. Daisy, green sunfish. I think that's the first green sunny you've seen. All right, buddy. Well, fish on the T-Rig. Even, even sunfish eat it. All I'm doing really is I'm just dragging it on the bottom. Just real slow, little hops, dragging it, feeling it over rocks. If I get it pushed up against a branch or something like that or edge of a rock, I'm just kind of thumping it right there, just letting it bounce around. Something's looking at it, you know, it might keep them enticed and then pop it off real quick. Most part, a real just slow drag. It's kind of what I'm going for. Just letting those, letting that craw do all the work for me. And it's coming through that really nice. Oh, there we go, guys. Oh, there's a fish. Oh my gosh. Jesus. Not a bad fish either. Oh, there we go, guys. Oh, fatty too. Oh, that's a fat fish. There you go, Daisy. What's up, girl? Mm. All right. So we got the drop shot bass out of the way. There we go. Fat T right there. Not a bad fish. Freaking fat. Ugh. Flipped in over there. Pulled up, felt heavy, and then my line went screaming to the side. There she was. She's like, fat that fish is. Golly. Daisy May. Look at that. Mm. Here you go, fatty. Go back and do whatever you were doing over there. Oh man, Joby. Oh, Daisy May. Yeah. Yeah. We got them, Daisy. Texas rig accomplished. On to lay wacky rig. That is what we needed right there. So we got a fish on the drop shot, a fish on the Texas rig, well, two, two fish on the Texas rig. And then uh, now we need a fish on the old wacky worm. And then uh, a little challenge today will be complete. Right on. That was sick. All right. That felt good. That felt good. Alrighty guys, again, just reiterate what a wacky rig is. You got a Senko or another trick kind of worm, O-ring in the middle, and your choice of your wacky hook. All right, old palm or not. I'm gonna do a little, Tristan likes to call this pizza sauce. If you ever talk to the beaver, I'm just gonna take the ends, dip them in this stuff, and basically what it does is it turns it chartreuse and makes them really, really heavy and garlic scent. So do not spill this on your carpet, because it will smell. I'm gonna catch this daggone fish that's up on this wall. That's what we're gonna do. Sun peeking down. Let's see what we can do with this wacky rig before it gets too dark here. Really nice bait to get into structure because you can just pinpoint cast this thing. I mean, especially with the Senko, it'd be so nice to just knock this fish out super quick. I love to pitch that Texas rig around a little bit more. I mean, I like, don't get me wrong, I like finesse fishing. I can power fish these guys. Ooh, good night. There we go, guys. Little guy. Little tiny dude. Oh, it's a another sunfish. No way, dude. No way. Oh my gosh. These things are animals. What are you doing? Felt oh, you hit from a mile away. I thought you were a bass, dude. I guess the green guys eat wacky rigs too. Fatty. Haven't caught them all season. Come out here one time. They're freaking nailing them. There's a bass. I saw him come up and eat that. That was so sick. That was so sick. Next cast. I saw him come up and eat that. That was so sick. Oh, that's a good fish. Yes, sir. 
That's a really good fish. Holy Lord. That's a really good fish. That's a three pounder right there, guys. Oh my gosh. Oh, Daisy May. <laughs> Daisy May. Big old coal slot. Come on, guys. That's not cool. That's not cool, guys. There we go, guys. Oh, I saw that fish come up and roll on that. That was sick. That's a good fish. Mm, 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 mm. On the wacky rig, Daisy May. That's how you get it done right there, girl. Yes. Wacky rig coming in clutch. That is a good fish right there. Whew, skipped it over in that tree. Just saw her come up and roll on it. Oh, right before we caught a little green sunfish, too. We're gonna let it go. You ready, Daisy May? Good? Good? Think you got it? Daisy May girl. Yes. Whew. I skipped it over there underneath the tree, about 20 feet away from the boat. I sit, twitch, twitch, and just saw that fish come out and just whoa, roll on it. So guys, there you go. Texas rig fish, drop shot fish, wacky rig fish, all out here at Bartlett Lake. And what a fish to freaking end it off on. That was that was killer. I'll probably fish around a little bit more, see if I can get some more footage for you guys. But uh, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video right there. That was. That was clutch. That was a great way to end this video. I'm happy I could get three fish, even though one was really small. I'm happy I could get three fish on all three baits for you guys and show that they work, especially out here. I mean, Bartlett's one of our most popular lakes and I just threw all three rigs and caught three fish on it. So right on guys. Well, I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope that you guys learned something from this video and can take what I was teaching here and implement it into your fishing out there. So. Whew. With that being said, guys, I'm going to get this all wrapped up. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And as always, I will see you in the next one.